Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. MMO Reporter's PAX Prime coverage is brought to you by... Dragon Fantasy, The Black Tome of Ice. A 16-bit style JRPG coming soon on Steam, iOS, Android, 3DS, and Wii U. Hey everybody, Chris here from MMO Reporter, and I'm here with Rob Overmeyer. He's the executive producer on Neverwinter for PC and Xbox One. We're going to focus today uh, on the Xbox One client, which will be updating very soon to pretty close to what the PC has right now. So let those Xbox players know what they're going to be getting with this update. Well, on September 8th, we launched the Elemental Evil leveling content. So that's going to take you from 60 to 70, uh, a bunch of zones there, as well as uh, three different campaign zones. That's Sharandar, Dreadring, and Icewind Dale, uh, and a ton of other stuff, great items, loot, rewards, tons of things to do, skirmishes, all kinds of stuff, um, as well as Paladin as a, as a, a class for players. Uh, so a ton of stuff in there, all coming on September 8th. So Oathbound Paladin, very interesting class. Uh, it's not just a damage dealer, not just a tank, not just, it can do all three. Um, it's a, a very interesting class. What sort of play style who, who should players expect when they decide to play an Oathbound Paladin? Well, you actually can choose. Uh, at 30, you can pick your Paragon path and you can focus on healing or you can focus on being a tank. So if you are a main tank and you love to get in there right into the fray, taunt everything and keep it on you, uh, just hop in there and the Paladin will feel right at home. If you want to be a main healer but you want to have some of those uh, Pally abilities, you can stand back, uh, get in there, have some melee fights and uh, heal and support as well. Um, Although there, is, there are Paragon Paths that you can select, there are some, some core Paladin stuff that each will be able to do. Uh, so there's a bit of support no matter what path you take. And how does uh, a Paladin as a tank differ from uh, a Guardian fighter as a tank? Well, there's a, uh, Guardian fighters are, are really uh, hardcore main tanks. Paladins can be very good tanks, but they have that utility on their back end uh, that, that makes them just a little bit different. Uh, they are good tanks, but they're not... Uh, they're not probably as good as the Guardian fighter tank. As well as their healing, the clerics are still the, the, the best main healer. Uh, Paladins have a ton of utility and they bring a lot to the fight. Um, but when you uh, go to queued content, if you rolled as a tank uh, Paladin, you do fill the role of a tank, um, but you can still get clerics in there uh, to help you out. And if you're uh, a healing Paladin, uh, you fill that role of the healer. Uh, and so a main tank, a Guardian fighter would then uh, be added if, uh, if you're queuing. We also talked about the artifact weapons, which is very interesting. Uh, this is something that's going to allow players to uh, maybe keep a weapon a little bit longer and, and also gain power and, and level that, uh, that weapon up. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so artifact weapons, um, they, uh, they basically grow uh, with you as you, you level them up. You can use uh, refinement items, also uh, items that you find in the world, like uh, weapons. Uh, you can basically put them on top of the uh, artifact weapon and it levels up. Uh, as they level up, they get more powerful, more stats, unlock more stats, uh, as well as get uh, more and better enchantment slots. Um, on the weapons, you get a weapon enchantment slot, and on the armor, you get an armor enchantment slot. And those will take uh, you know, enchantments and, and make your, your items even more powerful. So one of the frustrations that I've had with other games that have had a similar system, uh, legendary weapons, you know, things that, that you're meant to keep like that, has been uh, the time spent on those weapons and then, oh, you know what, you've got just a little bit better one. So you've, you've spent all this time on those weapons and now all of a sudden, oh, look at that, uh, where's the nearest vendor that I can get rid of this trash? Yeah, yeah. So what can you do with artifact weapons that, that, that doesn't do that? Well, one of the things uh, to begin with with artifact, uh, artifact gear, main hand and offhand weapons, um, is, uh, is because you can upgrade them, any item that drops in the world, be it a green sword or a blue sword or, uh, or better, uh, you, could, uh, you can basically put it on top of your artifact weapon and give it XP. Then if we have another artifact weapon that comes out later, at a later date, you can then take that weapon and then put in basically all of that investment, move it over to your new item, uh, and you'll still feel powerful. Uh, and then there's a little bit more uh, growth there as well. So um, you don't lose it, you don't look to sell it, you use it to, to go into uh, leveling up your next item. Uh, so there's still some more progression there. Um, and the other thing that, uh, that we talked about was the fact that, like, like I said at the beginning, this content update is going to bring us almost in line uh, with the PC version on Xbox uh, One. Um, are you looking to try and keep that um, concurrency or near concurrency moving forward? 
Yeah, so uh, getting as close to parity as possible is our goal. Um, there are going to be some logistical uh, reasons for us to be lagging behind just a little bit. Uh, but this, uh, on September 8th, this push that we have going out, a huge amount of content is getting us really close to that goal. Uh, and then we'll be uh, just about one module behind. But we want to keep working on getting better and better, getting through CERT, getting through our process better, so that we can uh, be as close to parity as possible. And uh, part of that is, of course, strongholds. Um, what sort of general time frame are we looking at for strongholds coming over to Xbox One? Uh, 2015. So this year. Okay. That's, that's not that far away. I mean, there's not that no, much of the year left. We're almost done. <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, uh, we also uh, talked about uh, the campaigns. And I, I really liked the campaign UI that you showed us that outlines what the campaign is and the steps that you need to move forward. As someone who is playing a whole bunch of different games and I'm often trying to remember what I was doing in this yeah. game and where I was going, um, can you talk about that UI and how that'll help players like me? Yeah, so we introduced on Xbox, we introduced campaigns with the Tyranny of Dragon campaign. Uh, it starts at level 30. It gives, uh, it gives you a really a clear path of what you need to do, what's available out there to do, and what you can get out of doing that. I thought I said do a lot. Um, with uh, most of our campaigns, it really presents that information in a way that you can, you can pick up right where you left off. You can open up that UI and say, oh, I did, I did three of the five things. Oh, that's what I need to do? And just sort of keep plugging away, com complete your quests, get the things you need to do to complete your campaign tasks, and just keep progressing. So uh, the, the main point of the campaign UI is really to uh, show all of the players what, uh, what's available and how you get to the end of each of those storylines. And uh, when you launched uh, uh, the, ca the content that let players move up uh, from level 60 and higher, uh, there was a lot of discussion, saw a lot of threads on Reddit, on the forums, about uh, what players were describing as a huge grind to get through that content and not something that was the most pleasurable experience to get through uh, just because of, of how it felt very heavy and very you know, uh, slow in its pace to get through. Um, I know that you were talking about uh, uh, doing that with the, the PC. What did you do to the PC client uh, to make that a little bit smoother? There. So we had a ton of great feedback from our fans, a ton of enthusiastic players. Um, one of our goals was to give our content a little bit more life. Um, they, we did tune the difficulty a little bit, ramping up from 60 going up to 70. We were moving uh, all the players to end game. Um, but on PC, it was a little bit weird. We had some of our, our campaign zones were already there. Those changed in difficulty. We did have a bolt string system, so so you weren't uh, you know right right away when you hit 61 and you went into what now turned into be level 70, you did get moved up, but it was a little bit more difficult and, and quite frankly, a little bit shocking. Through the Elemental Evil story uh, line, um, there was a difficulty curve there. We got a ton of feedback from the players. We've smoothed that out. Uh, we've reduced the number of quests, the vigilance quests is what they're called in each of the neighborhoods. Uh, our goal there is to get, uh, get the players through that storyline, experience all of the, the wonderful Elemental Evil story, uh, and then level up to 70. And it's a lot better now, it's faster, uh, more rewarding, um, the, uh, the XP uh, is better, and the difficulty has been tuned down. Um, the difficulty has now moved to the end game, uh, and it feels really good there. We've got a lot of positive feedback on the changes uh, on the forums right now from PC, and all of that stuff and all of the tuning, even since we made those initial changes, we've tuned it just a little bit more, um, and all of that's going to be going live uh, on the 8th with uh, this big update on Xbox. Oh, fantastic. So that's going to be great for players like me who are, you know, still working our way up and then we hit level 60. Uh, and uh, I, I, I have to say, you know, I wasn't looking forward to that from what I heard, but that, uh, I think it's going to be much better now. It is going to be a, much, a lot better, uh, way more fun. Uh, and being able to experience more of the story is going to, uh, is going to make that experience at Neverwinter a lot better. Now, I do want to talk about this guy right behind us yeah. here. Um, are you, you know, are you looking to bring back all these iconic characters that we played uh, in games past uh, into Neverwinter? There's a lot, obviously, you know, right? There's a lot to, uh, that we can draw on for inspiration and stories that we can tell. Uh, Minsk and Boo have a great following. They have a great origin from where they came from for um, the, uh, the developers working on the, the, the original game where they showed up and how it was their characters and then, and, and then brought into the digital space. Um, being able to have Minsk and Boo in Neverwinter is great teaming up and 
seeing kind of the crazy things that Minsk does while you're in battle and then going searching for Boo because he went running someplace because he's scared. All that stuff is really great. And I think having more of those iconic characters in places is really important for Neverwinter. We have a track record of starting with Tyranny of Dragon being uh, tied to the big releases that, that uh, Wizards has. Uh, and we're going to continue that trend. But we also want to look back. If you look at back at some of our campaign zones, we've got the Feywild and, and Dreadring. We want to bring back some of those old modules and, 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 and tell a different story, our story, a little bit. Um, but along with those stories and modules, um, some of those iconic characters definitely would come through. Um, we really look forward to having some pretty big iconic characters coming into the future, so there's a lot to look forward. Fans are going to love it. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to infer, uh, with no input from you whatsoever, uh, that the, the artwork we see behind us does confirm hamster playable race. Uh, I was thinking that, but, but then I think uh, you know, it, it might be a hint with your shirt that it might be Laser Cat confirmed playable race. Um, there actually is a really cool item. I'm not going to confirm either of those things, <laughs> but just with the nod of my head and an affirmative. <laughs> You can, you know, take that as you will. Uh, but there are some really cool things with Minsk and Boo. Um, for our anniversary, we had a really cool throne. We have the Boo throne with big, giant, golden um, hamsters, um, as well as uh, a really cool, wondrous item so that players can have a little hamster and pet it and bring it out. So, so hamster playable? Yeah, a little bit of that. Um, but we had a ton of fun getting those characters in. Uh, the VO for it was absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'll confirm nothing. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. I uh, really appreciate it. I know Neverwinter uh, is something that I always jump into on Xbox whenever I've got the time, so I, I appreciate looking forward to uh, the great content that you're putting out. Yeah, thanks for, for hanging out. It was cool talking. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.